Welcome back everybody. My name is Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking and this is the second video in this playlist on accessibility. In the last video we talked about making text dynamic so that we could support all accessibility font sizes, so larger text. But in this video we're going to talk about colors so that our color scheme can support accessibility as well. Now if we are using native components from Apple or native colors like primary and secondary, those are automatically going to be accessible out of the box. But if we are picking our own colors and using a custom color scheme, we want to make sure that we are doing that strategically and making sure our color scheme is also accessible. And we are back here in the Swiftful Thinking Continued Learning Bootcamp. I'm gonna do another accessibility video here. In the last one, we looked at text. In this one, we're gonna look at colors. I understand we didn't use any actual accessibility modifiers yet. We'll get to that in the next video. But making your text accessible and the colors in your app accessible, I would say is much more important than the actual accessibility modifiers. Like if you had to pick one or the other, because there are so many people that have large fonts and trouble viewing screens. So. Firstly, we looked at text. Now we're gonna look at colors. Let's right click the navigator, create a new file, Swift UI view, and let's call this one accessibility colors bootcamp. Again, not really a technical term there, but let's see what we can work on here. I don't need to work on an iPhone 8 anymore. I'm gonna switch that back to an iPhone 14. And let's get coding. All right, let's make this one another simple screen. We're going to do a V-stack, and maybe I'll add a button here. Let's just do a, a title and action. Title will say button one, action. We don't need to do anything. Let's go to foreground color of maybe primary. Let's give it a button style. I don't use these very often on my channel. Maybe bordered prominent. That's the normal button. Cool. I'm going to copy that. And let's just paste it maybe four times. Button one, button two, button three, button four. And let's give the second one maybe a tint of maybe orange. The third one we'll do a tint of blue, which is I guess what we have already. So maybe we'll do green. And the third, fourth one we'll do a tint of purple. Why not? All right, down here, I'm gonna make this a font of large title, just so they're a little bit bigger. And I think that's enough for us to get started here. Okay, so first and foremost, we're looking at colors. Nick, why are we looking at colors? Well, if you've ever looked at a button before, you can tell pretty quickly if it's easy to read or not. So we can see here that these are all generally easy to read because the actual text is black and the background colors are some other color. But if I go ahead and maybe I had this button three, let's give this one a foreground color of white. Let's give this last one a foreground color of green. We can see here that now, even though we have this cool color scheme, this might be harder to read for some people than, than other buttons. And there's actually a way to measure this, which is what we're gonna talk about first. So without diving too deep into some of these accessibility modifiers, I'm gonna go up to the top here, click on Xcode. I'm gonna click on developer tool. There's actually an accessibility inspector. This is something that can run to inspect your app in real time, tell you what is wrong in terms of accessibility. Now I've had some mixed experiences with the inspector, so I am not going to use it that often in this playlist, at least not yet. But after we get into the inspector here, we can actually click on the window here and we can say show color contrast calculator. This is a Kind of funny that Apple's hidden this from us so much, but the contrast color contrast calculator is putting text on a background and it's going to give us a ratio on whether or not that is basically good or bad for accessibility purposes, for users to actually be able to read this text. So you can see here black on white is got a rating of 21 to one. 21 is a very high contrast ratio. All right. So this color contrast tool is basically telling us whether or not this color scheme is accessible. Can people actually read this text? So for our purposes right now, we have a green background with a white button. And when we look at this, we might think this is a really cool UI. Like this is 
we can read it. We might think it's really cool. We got it from our UI designer, but we don't know if it's accessible. Just because you can read it doesn't mean everybody can read it. Everyone sees colors a little differently. Some people have trouble seeing certain colors. So let's plug in this color scheme and see what we get. So the text is white, right? So that's probably FF, FF, FF. And I don't have the exact hex for the green color, but I just, I'm just gonna Google here. It looks like a normal green color would be something around 3CB043. All right, so it's probably not our exact green, but it's close enough. We can see here, this is telling us this fails for all text sizes, even the largest text size is 20. If I go down here, this fails. So even though I can read it, it's failing our check here. So we should not use this ever in our application. We can see here it's only a 2.8 to one ratio. Now, what is the ratio we're actually looking for? Well, if I go and just Google color contrast ratio, we, there are plenty of websites, pretty much any UI designer should be well aware of this. Color contrast checker, this is a popular one. I'm just gonna do this first one here. You can just, and this is essentially the same thing that that little app that Apple gave us is telling us. You plug in two colors, it gives us the contrast ratio. And on this website, it even tells us though, AAA rating is 4.5 to one for normal text, and a AAA rating is at least seven to one. So we saw before the it was like 20 to one for, for black on white. That's really good. But we wanna to try to get to at least 4.5, if not seven to one. So the fact that we plugged in our numbers here, we got 2.8, we likely should not use this at all ever in our app. Now I'm not gonna go through and like plug in all of these. If you have a UI designer, they probably should be well aware of this and they should be doing this before they give you a UI design. But if you're doing this yourself, I would say before you actually you know, decide on a color scheme, I would plug in all of my dark and light mode variations to some color scheme checker and just make sure we're hitting at least somewhere around five to one, if not higher, for all of our colors. That is the number one biggest thing to, to get across when dealing with colors for accessibility. You just want a good color scheme that is easily readable. Now generally, if you're using like the primary and secondary text colors in your app, right if we made a if we made this a navigation stack and we added a nav title you can see this is a white background on black text and there's a reason that almost all of apple's ui components come by default with like black white gray variants because those are accessible they're easy to read and we don't have to worry about it i think a lot of like you know junior developers or first time design teams are trying to get really nifty with their UI design, try to get really cool color schemes going here. But at the end of the day, you really wanna make sure that your app is usable, it's a utility, people can read it. Because even if it looks super cool, if people can't read it, it's kind of pointless, right? Before we wrap up this video here, I wanna show you guys just a couple more intricate color related accessibility things. I personally don't use these too often, but it kind of depends on your app because if your app is just using like default components where you're just black on white most of the time, that's primarily gonna be accessible for everyone, for everything, and you don't really need to dive into edge cases. But if you are fully customizing your app, there's probably gonna be more edge cases that you're gonna to want to handle. So let's dive into some of those now. And to do that, I'm gonna take this file, make it the first file in my app. Let's go up to our app.swift file. I'm gonna build and run this to a simulator because I want to play around on the actual simulator for a second. All right, so I have my simulator here. Now for the rest of this video and in the next video, we're going to actually talk about some actual accessibility modifiers. So I'm going to actually background the app real quick. I'm going to go to the settings on the simulator and I'm going to go down to accessibility, display and text size. So again, here in the last video, we actually looked at the larger texts, right? These are the larger texts that the larger text that we were talking about. But what in this video we're talking about the colors. And so down here, there's actually a bunch of other color related accessibility settings that your user may have. We're gonna first talk about reduced transparency. So reduced transparency is a setting that the user must have if they 
want to reduce the transparency for blurs on some backgrounds to increase legibility. It says it right here. By default, I don't think that does too much in our default code. But let's do an example of trying to reduce the accessibility for a user. So in my app here, I'm going to add a background to this screen. So coming down here, let's add maybe a background. Of, let's do maybe color.black. Let's do maybe dot .opacity 0 0.5. Let's make it a frame with a max width of infinity, max height of infinity, and maybe yeah, we'll ignore the safe area. So this is a cool UI, right? I can see that there's a great background. And I'm going to get rid of the navigation title because it's going to break our UI for a second. So let's just pretend like we don't have a black navigation title. But this is a cool UI, right? I have this kind of grayed out background here. And when I run it, it looks pretty good. But some users might find this difficult to tell the distinctions between maybe the edges of these buttons and then the blur that you have in the background. And this is probably more common if you're using actual blurs or like system material colors. But you can see here that this is not fully black in the background and it's easy for me to read, but there's probably some people who might find this UI not great. So if the user has something like reduced transparency on and you have this kind of dull blurred background, you might want to do a little customization. So you could do something like you could pull the value from the environment. So we'll add another environment variable here. We'll use the accessibility and we're gonna look at, and you can see here how many accessibility modifiers there are. Accessibility reduced transparency is the one we're looking at. I'm gonna call this reduced transparency. And we'll just say if reduced transparency is true, question mark, then we're not going to use the opacity. So we're just going to do color.black. Otherwise, color black opacity. So if I run my app now, if they have reduced transparency on, they'll get this hard black background because maybe that will make it easier for them to actually see these buttons. But users who have the default case without reduced transparency will keep that cool gray blur background. This is not a perfect use case as a lot of these examples are, but that's kind of the gist of if the user has a reduced transparency on, go through your app and look at anywhere where there's like a blur or a kind of like a see-through material and then maybe decrease the amount of see-through. So make it opaque for the people that have this on and make it see-through for the normal use case. There's a couple other ones here. We can look at, let's turn that off. Let's look at another one here, maybe increase contrast. So increase the contrast between app foreground and background colors. So if I turn this on, we can see the default, some of the default components already change colors, right? So normally we have this like light gray and a white. I increase contrast, it's now a dark gray and a white, so it's easier to see. I think it probably looks worse from a, the normal perspective, but it's easier for some people to read because there's no, more of a difference now. If I jump back into my app, we can see that even the colors have kind of changed slightly in contrast. Now this is decent, but this is not great. And we can also customize our app to support this even more. So maybe if I come up here, let's do another one of these. This time let's pull out of the environment the color scheme contrast. And let's just call this color scheme contrast. And so maybe, I let's see, I have this this button here with a blue background and black text. And that's not, that's kind of hard to read now that the contrast has this dark blue background. So the text color I have is primary and maybe I'll say if the color scheme contrast is maybe increased, let's make the text white, otherwise primary. So if I run this real quick, we can see that white text on the dark blue background, that's pretty easily visible compared to what it was. But if I turn off my color scheme contrast, we're back to our now default black text with the blue background. Again, none of these are perfect examples, but this is kind of the gist of how you go about supporting the accessibility colors. Turn on some of these toggles and then jump into your app and address what you need to address. There's a couple more we're gonna go through real quick before we wrap up here. Differentiate without color replaces the user interface items that rely solely on color to convey information with alternatives. 
I am not an expert on exactly what that's supposed to mean, but my general consensus of it is if the user wants to differentiate without color, we can basically try to make our app black and white because then they can differentiate things without having to understand colors. That's at least my interpretation of it. It's probably wrong. So now we turn differentiate without color on. Let's go back to our app here and we're going to look at maybe, let's see, button four. Let's do maybe like button four or something. So let's see here. Let's turn off our background. That was part of a previous example. And so we got a white background. All right, there's button four. If we have differentiate without color. So up here, I'm going to copy and paste another one. Let's do differentiate without color. Paste that here. Make this differentiate without color. So if we have differentiate without color on, question mark, Let's make the foreground color white, otherwise green. And if we have differentiate without color, let's make the tint color black, otherwise purple. So if I build my app real quick, and by the way, I'm building my app by pressing Command R real quick. So it's a nice little tip. So if I have differentiate without color on, I can see real easy black on white. That's really easy to read. And if I turn it off for everyone else, we now have our cool color scheme. This is not a good color scheme. I would not put this in an app but that's how you would use that kind of modifier. And realistically, if I had differentiate without color on, I would want to apply that, or all of these, I would want to apply to all of the buttons. I am doing it to just on one button, just for example sake, so I want to move quickly here. All right, and last but not least is smart invert. This makes lets you invert the colors. So here, right now I have like a green here. If I invert it, it's into a purple. I'm gonna turn this one off actually. We can pull this out of the environment as well. I could do an invert, invert colors. Let's call this invert colors. And then I can use this in my app. I'm not gonna go through that use case. I think right now nothing actually inverts by default. We just have a normal button scheme, but you can support that as well if you want. I would say generally speaking at a high level, I don't go through and do this on every single screen. This is a lot of time and effort for pretty, I would say, small percentages of users that have these turned on. But the, the caveat here is you don't really need to spend a ton of time doing these if you have a really good color scheme. If most of your app is black on white and white on black and anything kind of that, that basic realm, if you open up Instagram or Facebook or TikTok or anything like that, all of the text is generally easy to see and read. There's almost rarely a weird case in these large apps where there's something like this that is kind of tricky for you to read. And that's because they are constantly checking the color scheme, making sure they have a good contrast ratio. And if you have that, then users basically don't need to increase the transparency and all this stuff because it's probably easy enough to read by default. So that should be your primary goal is basically getting your good color ratio so that it's always accessible. All right, I hope this helps somebody. And now you know how to make your the colors in your app accessible for everybody. And your app's going to look really cool, I have no doubt. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I am Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.